All right, um, let's go ahead and call our meeting to order today, Tuesday, February 22nd um, at 7.03 p.m. Uh, Gina, do you wanna go ahead and start roll call? Okay, Commissioner Cummins. Um, Commissioner Sorio Soriano. Davis. Present. Jones. Present. Focal. Present. And Newton. Present. All righty. So first um, item, or I guess third item on our agenda is business from the public. Um, it looks like we have uh, Patrick Hurley here and then also uh, Chief Hardin. And I believe Chief Hardin will be speaking with us uh, a little bit later in the agenda. But Patrick, did you have anything to bring to the floor? Patrick is with APD. Um, so they are a joint show tonight. So. Oh, perfect. He's Dream the brains team. behind me. Perfect. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and move forward with approval for the January 25th meeting minutes. Do I have any revisions or um, do I have approval? I move we approve as submitted. I second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. All right. Sounds like they are good to go. All right. So um, number five on our agenda, uh, part A, is the statistical transparency of policing report. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in our last meeting and grateful to have uh, Chief Harden here and Patrick Hurley, which I do not know your title, I apologize, but thank you for being here. Welcome, thanks for having us. Nice seeing you again and the little one there, Stephanie. Uh, we just passed out. Oh, I know. I, that Believe me, I'm jealous because I wanted to be passed out by chair right now. So, um, well, thanks for having uh, Patrick and I invited uh, actually Pat uh, on the call as well because he is responsible for uh, gathering in some respects, it's mostly automated, the stop data uh, and making sure that we're accurately reporting it to the state of Oregon. Uh, and I, I believe I saw the same thing come through for the diversity advisory team, the same article come through as well. I think KEZI or somebody did uh, a, a news story on it. And uh, this is one of those things where it's like a, it almost has to be like a two hour lecture to understand really the context in which this data is collected, what it means, what it means internally, what it means to the state of Oregon and the like. Um, just to give you some context or some history on it. Uh, and again, I'm coming new to the state of uh, Oregon in two years. Washington, we had a very similar project where uh, state, uh, local county and uh, municipal police agencies were required, depending on their size, to report stop data to the state. Uh, that includes the reason for the stop, the uh, racial and gender demographics of the stop, what kind of stop it, it was and the like. Uh, and then we report that off to the state. And the purpose of that is, is a transparency move, make sure that, that our, um, the reason for our stops and who we're stopping is within uh, one, it's legal and as well as there's not any uh, massive racial uh, bias or uh, discrepancies there. So uh, you, if you look at the, the website that the CJC has for the state, it's a massive uh, Word PDF document that goes into detail about all these different agencies in the state well, the Lynn County Sheriff's Office uh, and Pat works for the APD uh, created our own dashboard so that we could be way ahead of what is going to the state. Uh, and so I asked Pat to come on, talk a little bit about how this dashboard is designed, what it shows. Um, we can actually compare ourselves to our sister cities and counties around us. As far as we know exactly where we are up through the end of 2021, partly into 2022, some of the data is not uh, fixed yet just because Pat's been out uh, a little bit, but I'm going to have him come on here. Uh, and um, if, if Gina or um, Kim can sh give him shareability, he'll sh share with you the dashboard. It is, uh, it allows us to look very quickly at uh, what our officers are stopping people for, who they're stopping, 
uh, they're required to enter the stop data per our policy and per the law. If they don't, it throws an error, uh, throws up a red flag for us to check. Uh, and we frequently, on a weekly basis, go back and try to track those down. A lot of times it's officers forget or whatever the case may be. Uh, and I can tell you, uh, I think up and through the end of 2021, Pat, we're at zero for errors or missing information on that, on that data report. Um, and uh, we can look at, again, look at what our, our closest comparable is Corvallis. So we can look at who they're stopping, how they're stopping, what time they're stopping. This uh, dashboard also goes a little bit further that we have an early warning system in, uh, in the Albany Police Department where if we get a certain number of complaints or we get a certain number of uses of force, uh, it, a, it triggers an early warning system within. And we can actually go to the dashboard and look as well at how many stops somebody's doing, what the demographics are. Uh, so we get an early look into that accountability piece far sooner than the state ever publishes it. So I'll let Pat um, share his screen and he can walk you through a little bit about how this dashboard works and we can answer any questions that you guys have. Okay. So can, can all of you see the dashboard? Uh, on my yes. Screen? yes. Okay. So uh, Lynn County did the bulk of the dashboard and it was designed primarily for auditing and for tracking uh, the data that was actually being submitted. So the page you're looking at now is going to be all the different sections that our data gets submitted uh, to the state. Of uh, note is probably like section three here uh, is if the race is known uh, prior to the stop or not. And for the last year, uh, only about 16% of that's been the case. So you can, we can easily look at those types of things. For auditing, come over into the missing entry piece. And so our supervisors are really pretty good about getting on the officers. If there's data missing, it's okay, officer, go back in and update and fill in the data that's missing so that we have accurate and complete information. And you'll notice that APD is not listed here because we are currently up to date uh, for that time period. Um, then if we need to, if, if there is an early warning um, indicator, we can go over to the individual officer stats. We can track by officer all the, the non-white contacts, you know, percentage. And, and currently the demographic is, uh, white is about 81% based on the, the most recent population estimate, which I think you gotta be kind of careful using that data, just the way it's collected and the way it's done. But so if anything is way above 20%, that's gonna be a trigger it says, hey, we maybe we need to look at a particular officer. And if we select the officer, then I've got every single call that they've been on and we can crosswalk every single thing to say, uh, we may have a training issue here, or it may be that's just the incidents. That's just the way it is, uh, and, and it's all legitimate. Um, went to a training in 2019 that was put on by the gentleman who's actually creates these annual reports for the state. And um, he talked about a couple of measurements that they were going to use in their analysis. Uh, the first thing they said is do not use census data. Um, and there's a lot of problems when you do that in terms of it, it's not capturing a whole host of things about your community. Uh, one of those being who's coming into work, who's leaving, um, the, the transitory nature of traffic and, and those types of things. And so they, they designed the different other methodologies looking at specific officer actions that would indicate you may have a profiling issue or, or racial issue that you need to address. So I used those to create this next page here. And so the first one is I, I have the the census data there simply as a reference point. 
this is as of July of 2021. Uh, and so we can break out, okay, here's what the population estimate is. Um, then we use a veil of darkness. So we're taking a swath of time, kind of around evening, um, and it's you're looking at across the year, what is the latest time where it's light and what's the earliest time it's dark. And you take that band and you're looking specifically at um, during hours of darkness, it's really difficult for an officer to determine race. Therefore, you're going to compare kind of those hours of darkness where it's difficult to hours of light to where race would be obvious. And, and you're looking at, is there a real disparity between the two? So if you look at our veil of darkness on the stops, the, the D represents dark, the L represents light, and we can go by race, you know, what they are. And so for uh, like Asian, for the entire year during darkness, there were six during dark, five during light. It, it's really, really comparable. And so that's like the indicator, there's no indicator there that says, oh, I, we may need to dig into this because those numbers are so very close. The other difficulty is with in Albany, it's particular demographic. When you're dealing with very low numbers, any increase or decrease is gonna have a significant percentage increase or decrease. So you, you've got to watch those, those low numbers of which if you look at most of these, with the exception of Hispanics and white, they're mostly really low. So any one difference is going to have a significant percentage increase or decrease. So that's something you got to really take a look at. So looking at veil of darkness for the last year, really these numbers are comparable. In an ideal world, your dark equals your light or you want your darkness a little higher than your light, specifically for some of those minority groups indicating uh, we're not looking at a person's race when we're, when we're deciding to make that stop to begin with. Does that, that all kind of make sense a little bit for the veil of darkness? The second component that um, they look at is the hit rate analysis. And that deals with the decision to make a search after the stop is done and was anything found? And so um, in an ideal world on these, the different hit race have uh, white is always across the bottom and the different ethnic groups are across on the, uh, the left-hand side. And so you're looking for that green dot to be you know, close to that center line where you have the yellow and the green. You're, and what would be a concern is, is if you have a large disparity. And I'll show you one. Uh, I'm going to look at Corvallis. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. But this with the uh, Pacific Islander in the white, this is what I'm looking for. Now, when you go back to the data, they only had one. There was only one stop for the entire year. And so, I mean, that, again, goes to the statistical significance of... Okay, if I had a bunch of stops and I'm way up here, I need to take a look at that. That's something that's going to trigger us to look back at either specific officers or, or something in the training or something that's going on that needs to be addressed because it shouldn't be there. I'm looking more closer to all of these other ones are really close to that center line, and that's what we're looking for. So does all, all that kind of make sense? So, these, these are designed to look at the analysis, uh, to be pointers to say, or early warning systems say, hmm, we, we need to take a look at either an individual, we need to take a look at the department or training, uh, or at least kind of look at why they might be out of whack a little bit. Uh, looking at APD numbers, at least from what I am seeing as the crime analyst, we're looking really good. Uh, and so hopefully you guys can uh, take some assurance in that. Uh, but these things are in place to give us indicators of we need to look at something. So does anyone have any questions on the dashboard? So curious about, so hit rate. So we have, mm -hmm. um, is it, so I'm seeing like searched um, and then contraband. Yep. 
So what is the number of is so the, 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 the search? What yeah. search? So is it so the search? Yes, is the decision to make. There was a yes decision to make the search. Okay, and then contraband yes is and contraband was actually found. So it's kind of that's your success rate. And so what you're looking for is if I have on that particular, I'm looking for a really low success rate. Uh, that indicates I'm making a decision to search a bunch, but I'm not finding anything, which may be a clue I've got something that I need to look at a little bit more closely. Uh, in this particular case, you know, the, the lower one is, you know, black is 0.25 compared to the 0.4. That's really pretty close. But when you're looking at a total of four searches during the entire year, any number change is going to really affect that percentage. Okay. Thank you. The One of the things. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Stephanie. I'm worried about oh, questions. Oh, no, it's not a question. It's a, it just sounds so ominous. The veil of darkness. It sounds oh. like it's the, uh, it reminds me of the book, Heart of Darkness. Yeah. It, it's used that, you know, and, and, and you know, we didn't make it up. It's actually, um, it, it's one of those. Industry terms. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those to say is, you know, if you we have this veil of darkness over us, then you're not going to be making those deci decisions based on race or, or another factor because you can't, you're blind. It's like justice is blind type of veil of darkness. So yeah, it does sound ominous. Is I have there, no control over that one. Is there data that attracts um, all encounters, not just traffic stops, or is this primarily aimed just at uh, traffic stops? Uh, this is all stop data, mm -hmm. which the majority is traffic. OK. Uh, but stop. you have, let's see if I can go to the annual report. So on this type of contact, uh, okay. uh, you, you can see the vast majority is traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are other stops in there as well. Thank you. Uh -huh. One of the things to add here, um, it, the, this specific dashboard has to do with what we are required to report out to CJC, but it is actually a useful tool for, again, our early warning system. Uh, I don't know if it's well known that all of our officers have body cameras and uh, the vehicles have cameras as well. So Pat, if you go back to the officer stats for a second, so say we have uh, an officer uh, that suddenly comes up on our radar for a lot of complaints uh, or we get a biased complaint against the officer. One of the things that's a standard protocol would be to go and check this data. Uh, and so if we pick on anybody, let's pick on Blake Miller just because he's the top uh, contact person there. He's one of our more proactive folks. So if uh, I can go through here and on the lower right hand side, um, Pat can sort that by, by the race category. And so I can start digging or supervisor can start digging into all of these contacts, which are um, video and um, video for cars and body worn video is kept for uh, a period of time. So we go back and view that. And we have to have cause, just, we can't just randomly review their body cams, but that would certainly, if he came up with an early warning system, part of that early warning system, say it was for use of force, and I just reviewed three of them today. It Once they have an X number of uh, use of forces within a set period of time, it triggers an early warning system where we have to go back and review all of those uses of forces, which include reviewing the video and making sure we have a problem or don't have a problem. Uh, part of it, 99% of the time, it's training type things. Uh, one of the things we've been dealing with for the last two years is a, is a huge shortage in our patrol staff, which we're seeing officers go hands-on with uh, individuals uh, where they would normally wait for a second or third officer to get there, which lowers the amount of force and lowers the, the chances of injury to the officer or the, the suspect. Um, and we started to see uh, more and more officers were going hands-on with people before backup got there and that it triggered a, a, a massive change in direction for us 
because I don't want anybody to get hurt either on the suspect or the officer side. So the things like that help trigger and we can review this. Uh, again, it's up to date as of, it's fully up to date through the end of 2021. And Pat just has um, the majority of the data in for 2022 so far, but he's got to do some work on the, uh, on the back end on it. Awesome, thank you. This is uh, interesting stuff. And if uh, anybody's interested too, if you're uh, on a quarterly basis, an annual basis, we publish our uh, use of force data on our website and it breaks it down by gender, age, race, uh, what type of force we use, what type of force the other person used, whether mental health was an issue, what kind of crimes they committed uh, and the like. Uh, it's always posted on our website on a quarterly basis and goes to the city council as well. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions we can answer for you? No questions here. Thank me. you. Does anyone else have questions? And it looks like also um, uh, another member of our commission joined as well, Gina. Just make sure you was uh, noted in our attendance. Commissioner Soriano. Okay, I got that he joined at, um, oh, I wrote it down somewhere. Is he here now? Is he not? It looks like he dropped. So he might be having connectivity issues. Okay. okay. Kim, is there any, is that all the questions that you guys had that you put? Uh, I'm happy to come back anytime and talk about it if, if an issue comes up or a question comes up. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't have any questions at this time. Um, does anyone else have any questions they want to uh, bring forward? If we have any anything that comes up, though, uh, we'll be sure to reach out. But really appreciate your time and uh, both you and Officer Hurley. Is that? Crime analyst. OK. I don't He's get away with the gun. Yeah. It's He's okay. smarter my, than my, we are. My father-in-law is a forensic accountant, so up in Port, up in Portland, so same, same deal. Thank you both so much. Greatly appreciate your time, and go home, get warm, and go to bed. Thank you. Good night. Okay. All right. So let's move on to our next item agenda. Um, we have Historic Preservation Month coming up um, in May. Oh, it looks like Greg's, Greg is back as well. Uh, so the idea that we floated for Historic Preservation Month um, is working with the Landmarks Commission and doing a, you know, a tour um, highlighting the diversity um, as well and, and how, as how it intersects with um, um, Albany's historic 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 history. That sounds really correct. Correct. Um, so, I, I I was planning on spearheading this uh, project, and I believe Keith, you also volunteered to help me out with this. Yep, happy to do so. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to be attending the next Land Barks commission, commit, commission meeting, um, and I've floated it also uh, to several members of the Landmarks Committee. So. It sounds like it'll be a go. So we'll need to get like a tour put together. Um, it sounds like, you know, limitations for in-person oh. events are coming, coming. Uh, we're gonna get some relief from that. And, uh, but yeah, so that, uh, that's the update on that. So any questions for this, this item? All right, hearing none, let's go ahead and move, over, move forward to our next HRC project updates. Does anyone have a um, update for any projects that they're working on? I kind of briefly went over the historic preservation one. Uh, any other projects that you guys would like to bring forward to the commission and execute with the city? I think Jamie and I still have to. Keith, could you meet yourself? What was that, Robin? I said, I think Jamie and I still need to uh, meet up on ours. So we have not done that. We will uh, double our efforts to do so this month. OK. Um, I do have an additional, so more information forthcoming. 
um, but a member of the Oregon Humanities Board uh, reached out to see if we were interested in doing um, a program with them, you know, in partnership. And so I, I'll get more information from them as, as it comes forward. Um, but I think that this sounds like something that will definitely align with our goals and um, our mission. And uh, I'm excited to bring it forward to the commission and for us all to work, work with the um, Oregon, Oregon Humanities Board. All right, uh, so do we have any uh, event debriefs or upcoming events we'd like to add to that? Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I um, have a meeting with um, um, Mr. Dorsett um, oh. on Thursday regarding the, um, the Unity Walk. Oh, fabulous, thank you so much. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll update you guys next month on how that goes. Hopefully it'll go well. And what, when were we planning on uh, doing the mm. Unity Walk again? Well, we talked a little bit about the end of March, possibly. I don't know. We'll have to. I'll have to see if what he thinks. Maybe okay, can... maybe in like the summer. Um, probably sooner than that, Stephanie. Yeah, we'll we'll give it a whirl. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Sounds good. Yeah. All I'll, right. I'll, look, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Perfect. I'm excited. I'm excited to attend again. Uh, all right. So, are do we have anything that we'd like to add to the HRC calendar? Or any additional events that we anyone attended? I don't have anything that's coming up that I know of. Um, Kim, do you know of anything that is city based? Not at this time. Um, I know there's potentially some ADA um, online trainings that might take place a little later on in the spring or the summer. Um, but at this point, that's that's all I know of. Okay. But no dates have been set. Okay. Sounds. Madam important. Chair. Yes. This is Javier Cervantes. Hello, Javier. Did you want to bring something to the um, commission? Community member. Uh, I, know, I know this is not business from the public, but there is the unity celebration on on Friday um, oh. that people can uh, attend via Zoom um, on uh, Friday. At, I believe it's Friday 9 a.m. You can go to their uh, webpage and their calendar of events and find it if you're interested in attending on Friday morning. On who, on whose website? I'm sorry, Lynn Benton Community College. Oh, okay. Um, they've had some fabulous uh, Zoom uh, informational, what is the word, webinars for Black History Month as well this, this month. Mm -hmm. They've been fabulous. So you know, you can do celebration. Okay, I found the link. I'm gonna drop it here in the chat for you. Oh, I cannot drop the link. I will email it to you, Kim. Uh, I think that'd be great. I'd love to go. Sorry for the short notice, but that's Friday. Thanks, okay. Javier. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Javier. It is on the calendar of events. Oh, it is? Oh, fabulous. All right, so highlights for this meeting's uh, annual report presentation. Oh, and speaking of, we're moving the date from the, from the presentation from tomorrow to next, uh, this time next month uh, for city council. All right, so um, does it, do we have any business from the commission? Robin, did you have anything to bring forward? Nothing new. Okay, Jamie, Greg? Uh, no, nothing new. Keith? No chair. All right. Um, Kim, do we have any staff updates? I do have one. Um, uh, well, actually two. Uh, a new HRC member was, I think is getting approved tomorrow night at eight. Um, it was either last meeting or this meeting, I apologize, um, for the HRC for Ward 3. So um, hopefully next month we will have a new member. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, Albany joined the Oregon Latinos in Government chapter um, uh, to help support our staff and just to be better educated and, and more connected and better. Um, and so we reached out to see if they were gonna potentially have any sort of engagement for city council or um, community uh, citizen advisory groups 
um, or just any other constituents that we potentially work with to help. Um, and at this point, they're just kind of focused on getting the project off the ground. They said eventually they would like to have some additional training or, or opportunities for connection. Um, they're just not there yet, but I wanted to let you know that we're monitoring it. We've reached out to them twice. Um, and so we're just excited to see um, hopefully what improvements come from them. Okay, perfect. And that reminds me, um, we have not met with the Hispanic Advisory Commission in quite a while. And I know that they just recently decided at their, um, I believe their December meeting, that they would like to continue meeting with us. So um, as a heads up to everyone, I'm going to be reaching out uh, to get a meeting scheduled with them. And then actually, I realized the only other thing is, and we'll discuss more at our next meeting, um, with talk of the mask mandate dropping, um, some groups are deciding to meet back in person. Um, I know this one, when we had the conversation back in the fall, had decided regardless of masks, we were still going to meet um, virtually, but some time has passed. Uh, so once we, you know, this time next month, theoretically, we'll have some additional details or a date. Um, so we're going to set some time aside on the agenda for us to talk about how we would like to continue meeting moving forward. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. All right. So. Um, Without any other additional updates, I'll go ahead and call our meeting to adjourn uh, at 7.34 p.m. Our next meeting will be on Tuesday, March 22nd. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, folks. Stay warm. Be safe tomorrow morning. Yes. Thank you, Gina. Have a good night. Thank you, you too.